kanji rice porridge or juk in Cantonese. It's a simple homey dish that's perfect in cold weather. It's warm and comforting and it can be prepared in different ways. I'm out to find a few variations. So come with me. Let's see what we can find on today's episode. Today is a nice day for a bowl of kanji, too, because it's a cold, uh, brisk winter day, and uh, this should go down nicely and be very warming. And I got uh, a couple of uh, kanji orders to try, the first of which is chicken kanji. It's a very simple uh, uh preparation. It's the kanji gruel with uh, just some filet chicken meat. Let me just try the, uh, the porridge itself to begin. Ooh. Wow. The first thing that I felt was a very comforting feeling. I mean, it's cold outside and so that thing warms you up immediately. Often there is a there is some broth or stock used uh, in making the kanji. It has a slight chicken flavor. Obviously, it's a chicken kanji. Maybe they use chicken broth. The consistency of it is not too thick. I like it not too runny, not too liquidy, but not too thick. Somewhere in the middle, and I suppose a lot of people like it that way. I wouldn't say it's too runny, but it is leaning toward the thinner side of the kanji spectrum. That isn't a deal breaker necessarily. I mean, this is still good kanji. Let me try some of this chicken. Wow. I think sometimes in Cantonese, this is referred to as wat gai juk, meaning smooth chicken kanji. You want the chicken to have a very silky, smooth texture about it. And the chicken here is very tender. It's very smooth. Mmm. It has a slight gingery note to it, and the chicken is essentially poached in the the kanji, into, in the rice porridge. I, I think it's just dipped in there raw, and then it's cooked uh, by the heat of the porridge. I think that's how it's done. So you get the chicken flavor, there's a slight saltiness coming off of the porridge, and then the texture of the porridge itself, the consistency of it. And so that the totality of all that is the experience. Except <laughs> you do have uh, often the Chinese cruller with, uh, with kanji. Some people call this uh, the Chinese donut. I, I don't call it that because the Chinese donut is, is something else. Maybe I'll feature that in a, in a future video. I, 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 this is uh, yao tiu in Cantonese. So that translates uh, uh, literally to oil stick. And uh, it's often referred to as the Chinese fried uh, bread or the fried cruller or, or something to that effect. And uh, it's often dipped into the porridge and eaten that way. I, when I eat uh, kanji, I'll eat this, uh, but I usually like it undipped. Uh, I like the contrasting texture of the crispiness and the, uh, the crunchiness, the firmness of this in contrast to the softness of the porridge. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is good. So this has a distinctive fried bread, fried dough flavor about it. Wow, that's simple, but really good. And maybe I'll chase it with the, with the rice porridge. Mm.
Okay, for my next bite, I'm gonna dip it and uh, get it into the kanji and try it that way. I don't usually do that, like I said, but uh, let me try it this way. Oh, here it is with the kanji all over it. Mmm. <clears throat> wow. Mmm. That's good too. But as I suspected, when you dip it into the rice porridge, it does dampen the breadstick, the the yautil, the oil stick. <laughs> and so it's not as crispy. And so that's why I usually don't do it because I like I like this Chinese cruller to be crispy. And so Wow. It's much crispier if you just leave it alone. <laughs> And you can just chase it like that. Mm. Okay, I got a second order of kanji too. And this one is beef and seafood. It's not a common uh, type of kanji preparation. I mean, I've seen kanji menus around the DMV, uh, you know, at restaurants that serve kanji. And I don't see this often. I mean, you see seafood kanji. You see beef kanji, you certainly see chicken kanji because that's not a, uh, a terribly complicated kanji as I mentioned, uh, but uh, the combination of beef and seafood, that's a unique combination. Let me, uh, let me try the porridge. I think it's, you know, it's the same batch of porridge, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so it's the same rice porridge, the same juk in Cantonese. It's, it's the same kanji as the previous order of the chicken kanji. Mm. Uh, let me try some of the beef. Let me, ooh, let me see if I can fish out some beef here. Here it is. Oh, wow. Little strands, little cut up pieces of beef. And wow, that's really tender beef. Wow, I'm, I'm kind of agitating the contents. I'm seeing what kind of seafood is in there. I see a couple of pieces of squid and there's these strands, these kind of orangey brown strands of something. I don't know what that is. Let me, oh, here it is. Let me, let me try, let me try and try, try to figure out what these strands are. Mmm. It has a kind of firm crispness to it. I think they're kind of sliced up pieces of jellyfish. That would be my best guess. <laughs> and, uh, oh. Mm. There's a slight saltiness coming off of that, or those strands, uh, but it's not adding a whole lot of flavor. The squid, I think there's literally two pieces in here. And, oh, here it is. Let me try the squid. Oh, yeah. Mmm, wow. That's nice. Has a nice seafoody squid flavor and it's not too firm. I mean, that would be the fear or the apprehension with the, you know, cut up squid like that. You'd think it would be tough, but it's not. It's, it's firm, but, you know, very manageable. It's very tender. Mm. Mm. Okay, I've made it to the next spot, uh, China Garden in Rockville, uh, or, or is it North Bethesda? It's in that general area. I made it uh, from Ming's uh, for my first spot, and I ordered a pork 
and preserved egg, a uh, century egg, thousand year old egg uh, kanji. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you have bits of pork, you have pork meat paired with the century egg. This is probably the most well-known uh, kanji. Every place that serves kanji basically serves this one. And as I'm mixing it up and looking at it and examining it uh, just casually, <laughs> it's not thick and it's not thin. It's definitely in the middle, but, but unlike uh, the previous one I had at Ming's, the kanji there uh, was in the middle, but it leaned toward the thinner side. This one here leans toward the thicker side. <laughs> so they're both in the middle, but leaning toward the, you know, in opposite directions. Mm. And in terms of the flavor, this one seems to have a bolder, more savory uh, flavor about it. Mm. Here's, here's one of the pieces of pork. It, it looks like, uh, you know, one of those pork riblets. And usually in this preparation, it's, it, you know, it's minced uh, ground up pork. It usually is that. It's very kind of lean and just uh, thin. It's not chunky like this usually. Mmm. Yeah, that's what it is. It's little pork riblets. I kind of like it because it gives the kanji, you know, a bit of a uh, bit of a bite, uh, so to speak, a boldness and a and a meatiness. Yeah, and some of these chunks coming off the riblets, you know, are a bit meaty, a bit lean, a bit fatty. So, oh, I like that a lot, actually. Okay, let me try the uh, the century egg or the thousand year old egg. Uh, I've noticed they they cut it up into little chunks. Often when you order this, uh, they will merely slice the egg in half. So you get two halves and you can see the, you know, the oval egg shape pretty uh, clearly. Here they've kind of quartered it uh, or, or, you know, it's even smaller than that maybe, but uh, you know, it's very bite-sized. Oh yeah, oh. The century egg is usually fermented or left to uh, cure. Uh, it's a duck egg usually that's been uh, preserved. It's packed in some sort of mud, an alkaline kind of environment. Uh, and uh, usually you're left with sort of a cheesy ammonia uh, aroma <laughs> coming off the egg. Uh, this one uh, wasn't particularly pungent, but you do get that kind of uh, you know, fermented, uh, slight cheesiness. The ammonia flavor and smell wasn't particularly pronounced, but the gelatinous texture was certainly there. And I like it, you know, it's black on the outside and kind of greenish gray uh, in the interior of the egg. And uh, some people find that off-putting, obviously. That isn't uh, <laughs> the most attractive uh, color that you associate with food, uh, but uh, it is very tasty. And it goes well with the plainness uh, of the kanji itself, the rice gruel. And it kind of pairs well with the, uh, the protein of the pork. Uh, so that's why this is a classic combination. Well, as I wrap up, uh, what kind of kanji do you like? Do you like it thinner or do you like it thicker? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it uh, and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.